So you've been thinking about moving to the Northport area and possibly buying a vacant lot and building your dream home. So what are some major things that we should be looking out for when you're buying a vacant lot like this one right behind me? And what are some things you should probably stay away from, look for before you even sign the contract to buy this vacant piece of land? A lot of this stuff no one else covers, so we're gonna dive deep into this in this video right now. So when I'm taking my buyers through buying a vacant lot like this one right behind me, there are three major things that I like to walk them through. The first one is going to be the flood zone, right? So before we buy any vacant piece of land, I always want to double check the flood zone, right? Because if it is in a flood zone AE or something like that, you will need to get flood insurance for a mortgage and flood insurance, depending on the area, can run you anywhere between $2,000 all the way up to $5,000 annually. So that's just another expense to add on to your yearly expenses. Now, the second thing to watch out for when you're buying vacant land, especially in the Northport area, is going to be found up in these trees and they are the elusive scrub jay birds. Now these birds are bluish and gray in color, right? And these are a protected species here in Florida and they are very well known in the Port Charlotte and somewhat in the Northport area, really heavily um, found in the Port Charlotte, but there are a few spots in the Northport area. And what the problem is with scrub jays is that you there's two different things wrong right so if you do find scrub jays on your vacant land then you will have to get a permit to you know remove them from your property that could cost anywhere from fifteen to three thousand dollars just to get the permit and so forth but then the other issue is if you're looking to build new construction right there's certain months of the year where scrub jays actually nest which is you know you cannot touch the property for five to six months out of the year just because of the nesting period right so if you're looking to build a house within those months or clear you know your land within those months you cannot do that right so under you know florida statute they only require or they only allow you to you know remove all these trees during the certain months out of the year just because if there are scrub jays on the property they do not want you to wreck the nest so that is the second biggest thing and especially with builders now and they don't want to wait then you could probably potentially lose your builder so it's always good to be upfront and clear with your builder if you have scrub jays or your given time frame. And finally, the third thing to really watch out for is the elusive gopher tortoise. Now these can cost you thousands and even tens of thousands of dollars to remove the gopher tortoises. Now there are several different methods, but the biggest thing that you wanna look for, especially when you're buying a vacant piece of land right here, is make sure along the edge line of your property is that there's no like burrows or any type of larger holes where gopher tortoises have been. Now the reason being is that gopher tortoises can honestly be a real pain just to remove them. You have to get, you know, um, the Florida um, Wildlife Commission just to come out here and you know look at the property see how many turtles there are see how many burrows there are and so forth because they charge sometimes they charge per burrow to remove them and so forth there's different you know methods to get rid of gopher tortoises but honestly there's a long process and a permitting process to just get gopher tortoises off your property so it's always best when you're under contract on a vacant piece of land or so forth that we take a look at your land to make sure that there are absolutely no gopher tortoises because they can just be a headache at the end of the day. Now the fourth thing to look out for when you're buying vacant land is going to be how much it's going to cost to clear vacant land. So as you can see here, this one is pretty heavily wooded, lots of trees, lots of, lots of underbrush. And now if we have a typical standard size lots around 10,000 square feet here in Northport, so when we run into lots that are really heavily wooded, it costs around $5,000 to remove all the underbrush, remove all the trees and so forth. Now, if we find a lot for you that, you know, has just a few trees and a little bit of underbrush, it could only cost a couple thousand dollars. However, this is just another cost that you want to estimate in when you're buying vacant land. So now that we have identified the piece of property that we want, we're under contract and so forth, the next thing we have to look out for is going to be choosing the builder to build your house, right? And in Northport, there are many, many different builders here. Some are custom, some are semi-custom home builders, and then some are production builders where you just pick a floor plan and they put it on your house, right? So the biggest thing to really look out for when we're looking at home builders here for you in the Northport area is going to be one, make sure or to see what the escalation clauses look like in these builders contracts, right? Because if you guys heard some stories, right? building prices have gone up so the builder can raise prices so your final sales price when you sign the contract can change to the actual final sales price when you're finished done building your house so that's a one crucial thing to look for is in the contract and escalation clause 
And then the second thing to really be aware of is honestly looking at what is included in the base price of these homes with these builders, right? Because there's a lot of builders out there similar to in the Sarasota real estate market is that some builders include like coffered ceilings as you know the base price of the house or they include nine, 10 foot ceilings as the base price of the house or they include crown molding while some others don't. So it's really important to look at what you're getting for the base price of your house because at the end of the, at the, end of the day, that's really going to determine what your final sales price is going to be after you add in all the upgrades and stuff like that because there's some builders here that just do the very basics, right? And that could cost base price of 300,000 but then there's some other builders here that have crown molding, coffered ceilings, 10 foot ceilings, whatever it may be, large sliding glass doors, and that base price is 300,000. So it's very crucial to see what is included in your base price of your house before you choose a builder. And if you guys are really looking for a good solid builder here in the Northport area, reach out to me because I'd be more than happy to give you a few recommendations and we can go from there. Because honestly, not every builder is created equal and I've worked with different builders here in Northport and I'd be happy to point you in the right direction. So that kind of wraps up today's video about talking about buying vacant land here in the Northport area along with how to choose the right home builder as well. So if you guys have any other questions whatsoever, whatever it may be, buying vacant land here in Northport or choosing a custom home builder, whatever, feel free to reach out to me anytime. I'm more than happy to answer any of those questions for you. And once again, I'm super excited that you're following along with me on this journey here in Northport, and we will see you in the next video.